All right, so tonight we're gonna to talk about our radiator and our Subaru swap. And we have another video posted and I'm standing underneath the car. Actually, I'm standing under the bus with this radiator and I'm holding it upside down and I'm thinking I'm gonna have puller fans and I'm flipping it over and I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna have pusher fans and I'm trying to figure out how to deal with these hoses, right? Like, I don't know if Sean can pull in here, but like, that's a down, well, if you had it as pusher fans, like you get a hose on here and your radius, like you gotta drop this thing like crazy. I wanted good clearance and, and I was struggling with this, right? And then, you know, I've been struggling with Subi swaps since I placed my order with them and like stuff just not arriving. It's, we're like, we're year deep and I'm still missing my exhaust. Um, they keep telling me every week I'm next, it's coming, nothing. So finally, after about eight months of where's my piping for my radiator hoses, my custom radiator hoses showed up and this is what I opened two six foot lengths of pipe. And then they said, oh, we didn't send you mounting hardware for the radiator. And these two 90 pieces of aluminum angle iron showed up. So you can see it on my face. You can hear it in my voice. Totally disappointed, right? Like this is a kit. And so I wanted something better and uh, I looked, I did more research, and I came across Fellow Speed. Now we've talked about them now in a few of our videos because everything they sent seems to be top notch. So if Sean follows me over here. This is what I expected when I ordered a kit. So radiator, it's a custom radiator made to fit in the opening of a bus, right? And look at, look at the, the piping. So it's stainless steel. Right? It's all got the bead roll on the end. So like my hose will properly grip. Like it, it's as it's supposed to be, right? So it's all been bead rolled. It's already pre-bent. They, you do have to go through the side of the chassis. So here's my chassis strengthener. I'll be cutting the hole in the middle. Uh, it's this pipe. So I'll be putting this down here, running it back. Like I say, everything has been thought, everything's been fit, and so far everything we've been fitting up fits great. Um, came with beautiful hoses, the fans, I do still have to obviously mount the fans on it. They're going to be on the underside and be polar fans, right? Because you have the scoop at the bottom, so you're ramming air in as you go down the highway, and the fans are just helping pull that air through. So you have obviously the force of driving and the fans pulling. And when you're at a stoplight, you're relying on the fans just to suck that air through. So um, yeah, we're gonna go ahead, get this mocked up, show you what that looks like. The rat is hanging by itself in the car right now. Some of it is still self-tapping screws, but it's hanging. So anyhow, the point or what I'm trying to demonstrate here is this rad tucks up very nicely, right? Now the way they've gone about it, instead of your inlet and outlet being on top and you having more issue with hoses and clearance, right? Like everyone who puts this in, your number one concern is clearance, right? So if I put this on the frame, the lowest part of the frame on the back, I don't know how well Sean's picking that up, but on the lowest part of the radi radiator, like that is pretty much level, right? And we drive this bus pretty low. I am gonna say slammed, but I know I see lots of guys out in California who would think this thing is a four by four, but it rides pretty low. It's a nice, comfortable, low ride. And we, we've never hit this, so. I don't see any issue with the radiator the way it is. Your hose comes out underneath and tucks back in and up. Now, well, we'll, we'll get into that once we're installing all our radiator piping. 
And the fans are above. So if Sean comes back around the way they've done it, it comes with the scoop. It comes with pre-drilled holes in the side. You drop the scoop down. Radiators on a bit of an angle. So at the back, there's actually a lot more clearance than there is at the front. And the fans are going to be pulling. So you're going to have pulling fans on the top, air blowing in, pulling through, and then out. Now, with it being side instead of bottom or top, yes, you get more clearance, but you actually have to cut a hole. So we're gonna obviously move wiring, but cut a hole in the frame here for your coolant pipe to run down and back. Now, obviously you can see in this video, I went ahead and welded in my belly pans. So, we're going to have to cut an access hatch here so that we can connect the hoses and, and run them, um, which, is, which is fine. We got a new um, rivet thread tool, which we're excited to use. I'm going to make a nice little panel there, put some rev nuts in and bolt it back up. So it'll be a clean, nice install after the fact. Originally, we weren't going with these guys. We were using the other setup and we didn't think we'd be running over into the sides. Such is life, right? So uh, more about this uh, radiator setup. You can see like it comes with brackets. It comes with rubber like isolator mounts. Like it's not rigid in the vehicle. It's got your isolators front and back. They give you these. They gave you dimensions like it was a kit made to be installed without thinking too hard. They, they've done all the work, they've tested it, they've proven it. And so far, like, I couldn't be happier with this thing. Like I am, it is what I wanted in the first place. So radiators mocked up. We got to drill out, put a few more thread inserts or our rib nuts in. Uh, we didn't want to go with self tapping I liked the idea of having a nut and bolt torquing it down. Yeah. So, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you out there.